Welcome to Wood Brothers Wrestling Podcast Predicts. Ha-ha. I am Drew, and sitting right here beside me is my brother, John. Uh, yeah, I am also here. He is indeed also here. And this coming Sunday, May the 6th, coming to you from Newark, New Jersey, WWE presents Backlash. Drew's really excited about it. I'm actually really, really looking forward to this card, and I feel like that's an unintended, unexpected consequence of uh, that, that meaningless Greatest Royal Rumble last week. Well, yeah, but that meaningless Greatest Royal Rumble has also meant we've had a grand total of like a week to build most of these matches. Well, it's true, and yet somehow I care. Somehow I'm super excited for this pay-per-view. Uh, because we, we've got our steaks back. At the very least, we have our steaks back. Delicious steaks. Delicious, delicious steaks. Although, <clears throat> although from listening around the, around the internet, the, the big rumor is that there's not going, to be, uh, not going to be a single title change at this pay-per-view. Well, that, that's, that's nothing new. No, I suppose not. We've been seeing a lot of that. Um, Yay! We, but fun I mean, times. We, well, I mean, we're going to get into all this, right? Like, we're going to go through match by match. We're going to take it down, take a look. See what we think's gonna happen, what we want to happen. It's a pretty good one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's start with the match that I, I, well, care least about: Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And I should care because I love me some Kevin and Sami. Oh yeah, they've been uh, they've been nothing but a treat, uh, uh, particularly on Raw since coming over. I've been really enjoying them. He- heel Sami is just he's the most delightful thing. He's Canada's actual treasure. <laughs> He is he is Oak Island, but actually there. Wow, that was obscure. Uh, yeah, I did it. I pulled it out. Back pocket. Okay, so the match and the wrestling that we're supposed to be talking about. Yeah, yeah. Why are they doing this? I don't know, but I really want to just I I want to see how they slime out of it. I I Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn have this amazing uh, appeal for me. I just they're so much fun to watch, and they are having a, the time of their lives, seemingly. Um, and, and now they have to, to conquer a couple monsters. Yeah, but just from, like, a, 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 a win-loss perspective, who can, who can afford to lose this match? Because you can't, you're, you can't beat Strowman and Lashley, because no, no. it's Strowman and Lashley. Monster Man. And Kevin and Sammy have been getting embarrassingly destroyed lately. They have. They do, they, they have been sort of bordering on, on enhancement talent at this point. So at what point does it become, like, harmful? Well, I think this is where we could actually finally see a trigger pulled in terms of what... Cam- uh, I almost said Cammy. In terms of what... Uh, uh, God damn you, AJ Styles. <laughs> God in, damn you. In terms of what uh, uh, Kevin and Sammy uh, can actually do, we might actually see a trigger pulled here. I mean, th- this could be the shenanigans that lead us into the next chapter of their together shenanigans, right? Well, this match is... There's no way in my mind that this match does not end with shenanigans. Yeah, but I mean, where do you go from there, and what shenanigans do you suspect are gonna are gonna happen? Well, you know, it's hard to say because this one, like, sometimes you can you can kind of uh, take a good guess here or there, but like, if they are gonna pull the trigger on something, it needs to be a relatively big something—a third ally, a heel turn from someone behind the scenes, maybe Kurt Angle, you know, something like that. I mean, it, it's not actually the time for a Kurt Angle heel turn, in my opinion, but like that that sort of impact. That level of impact. Or they just straight up need to get a monster on their side. Maybe, so maybe. so your prediction here is shenanigans. Yeah, and I, I would almost hazard to think that maybe, like, if they do want to do something crazy, how about Authors of Pain? Yeah, I mean, that could happen, but the more likely thing is going to be my prediction, and that's that Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley are just going to beat Kevin and Sammy. Just destroy them? Yep. Are you, are, do you think squash? No. No, like decent back and forth, all four uh, men in the ring. No, it's going to be fairly one sided. It's going to, but it's going to be just more pounding on Kevin and Sammy because that's what WWE has been doing. All right. So from one match that I think can only hurt whoever loses to another match that I think can only hurt whoever loses, and that's Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass. Because really, what do you do here? Do you keep beating Bryan? Do you keep having him get beat, or do you put him over Big Cass, who just came back from injury and is supposed to be a big deal? Yeah, this is this is a bit of a booking conundrum, and really made me uh, a uh, conundrum. Thank you. Really made me scratch my head in terms of like why this would be Daniel Bryan's first official feud. I mean, don't get me wrong. I kind of like it. Well, I like some of it. I like the thought of it. Big Cass should be able to push him a little bit higher up, but it feels like it's gonna it's gonna kind of just drag them both down, which which is less fun. Yeah, I mean, you can't have Daniel Bryan go in there with a record setting what seventy five minutes. 
in the Greatest Royal Rumble, and then undercut it but just by having him lose to Cass. But you can't undercut the momentum of a returning superstar that with that much size, that much power. So, you know, double count out, double disqualification. So something. you're going you're gonna to double down on the fence of shenanigans. Uh, less shenanigans. Think more along the lines of what we saw AJ Styles and Shinsuke the other day with the double count out. Shenanigans. Eh, well, it's kind of shenanigans, I guess. But like, well, okay, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, that's going to be like overt shenanigans. And then with Daniel Bryan and, and Cass, it's going to be a little bit more like just brawling. Regular shenanigans? Brawling shenans. Shenans with a Z. Well, uh, no. It's still S's. <laughs> uh, I think they're going to... Oh, this one hurts. Um, I'm going to go with Daniel. I think you can't let him lose here. It would suck all the momentum out of him. But I mean, maybe they think he's over enough to sustain it. Just to get Cass over in the interim. I just don't think this should have been their first feud if that's what they're going to do. Hey, you want to uh, you want to time travel back to the uh, early two Ks with me for the next match? Hey, nothing you can say, nothing's gonna. T- Sorry. Oh my gosh, I'd completely forgotten about that. Thing. Randy Orton deep cuts. Wow, what I'm here for. So Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy is what we're talking about now. United States Championship on the line. Yeah, I mean it's great because it's fun to watch these two guys go still, especially for like people like us of our age mm-hmm. that. That Watch really grew up, up with these yeah. guys, yeah. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to it on that end, but I just, the United States Championship, I I don't care. That's all right. Like, for me right now, like, I also, like, the U.S. Championship is probably my least, like, the the, t- the title I focus on the least. It looks, and, si- it's silly. Yeah, I know, but, like, we, we badmouth how the title looks on, like, every show, so... <laughs> Well, someday somebody will listen to this, and they will l- well, what's probably worse? agree what's worse? with us, and nothing will happen. What's worse, what we have now or the John Cena spinner? Oh, yeah. Actually, I didn't mind the John Cena spinner when it was the U.S. title by back when. Yeah, that was the better of the two spinners. Yeah, it just got a little out of hand when they made it, like, edges. Ch- I, I, do, I miss personalized <laughs> titles, actually. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, they never really happened that often. Okay, anyway. Wow, that's yeah, that a tangent. Yeah, that was a super tangent. But we do have this title match that we are talking about with Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy. And I think it's going to be entertaining because, like you said, man, they're both solid workers. And they both have been solid workers for a long time. Orton is a... Ch- anybody who knows me knows I'm a big Orton fan. You know, he he's always fun to watch. He's good on the mic. That RKO out of nowhere that somehow became a sensation. But the, the one specifically just the other day on Hardy was just... It was just okay. great stuff. Again, like I said in my SmackDown review, it was not out of nowhere. I called it the second that match happened. It's actually... I have Twitter proof. That's the shame about... At the beginning of the match, I tweeted that they were going to win, but that Orton would find a way to RKO Hardy before the end of the, before the segment ended. Of course. And lo and behold... It's what Orton does. I'm friggin' psychic. I, I, that's the problem with voice. You can't actually see the air quotes around out of nowhere. I'm a friggin' psychic. Moving on. Carmella versus... No, we, we haven't done our predictions yet for the match. <laughs> so who do you think is going to win this match? Well, you know, I... I see no reason to take the belt off of Jeff Hardy at this point. Orton's got his uh, his Grand Slam now, so there's no reason to just slap it on him. I, slap I, it on. Gross. I think... Oh. I, I, <laughs> Dirty. Filthy. What's wrong with you? Everything. Yeah. I, I see no reason to take the belt off of Hardy. Yeah. I'm going to agree with that. I, I just can't... Uh... Although, Randy... Maybe they should just give it to Randy's hair. It is a champion. I'm, I'm definitely, it's I'm grooving champion. on old school Orton with the hair. I really want him to start coming out to that, to, to that other song again. No, there's no way. I would love it. I would no. love it. He would hate it. I'm certain. All right. Next match up on the list of matches that we have in front of us <laughs> is Carmella defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Charlotte Flair, who has a last name now. She didn't for a while. I've yeah, only just noticed, yeah. but I think it's been... It's, she's had it for a long time now. Same thing happened with Apollo Crews. Where they yeah, took, for like a week. Then but they gave it back. Yeah, foolishness. Uh, yeah, Carmella, uh, Charlotte Flair, squaring off. Um, this one actually kind of seems a little obvious to me, to be honest with you. In my mind, there's no way Carmella doesn't retain. Oh, well, yeah, that's... that's it's uh, The Iconics are 100% oh, yeah. going to interfere oh, in this yeah. match. Mean Girls. Mean Girls Squad. Yeah, I, I just don't see a world where they don't interfere here. <laughs> I'm actually really looking... F- this is one of the ones I'm really looking forward to. It's gonna, it's, I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be traditional sort of storytelling style wrestling. Mm. Uh, you're going to see the Iconics. You might see a couple other appearances from some of the other women in the division. You know, maybe coming out to help Charlotte. Maybe not. I, I, I just think this one's going to be a lot of fun. But don't expect to see a title change. Why would you? 
No, it would be kind of silly. Although I can, the argument I can see for it is, you might have given Carmella the championship just to get over the women's money in the bank, and they are just going to hot shot it right back to Charlotte. I could see that happening. I don't think it's what they're going to do, but I could actually see that being a thought process. I think that's fair. I think the only reason they wouldn't is I think her next win actually ties or pushes her past Trish Stratus for the most decorated women's champion of all time. I don't know the actual numbers off the top of my head, but I think I'm pretty sure it either ties her or pushes her past Stratus to win the belt again. And I don't think they're going to do it this fast. So I think what, what you'll see happen is you'll see Carmella retain. You'll see Charlotte get forced out of the feud and into something else. Carmella's going to go off and feud with someone else, and so on and so on. I, I don't find a lot of fault in what you're saying there. Yeah, I, there's no way this ends clean, though. It just Oh, no. Goodness, no. Oh, man, no. The Iconics will be there for sure. Like, for sure. All right. So the next match that they have on the list here is the other women's championship match, which is Nia Jax defending against Alexa Bliss. The build for this has been magnificent. What a fun rivalry. Like, what a good, well-executed rivalry. Oh, it's, it's been fantastic. And the fact that they are friends in real life, it makes a lot of what they say about each other okay. They've got a really nice chemistry in the ring together, too. They've always been fun to watch throw down, whether they're fighting each other, whether they're interacting in a segment, whether they're friendly or warring. Like, they're, they're always fun to watch, and the build has been fan. It's just, it's a good build. Yeah, I've been enjoying it, um, but Jax retains 100%. Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to they're gonna fire it back. I'm making a lot of 100% predictions here. Hey, man, be confident. <laughs> be confident. Like, have faith in yourself. You know, no one else is going to. Thanks, DDP. I sure don't. It's me. It's me. Day, day, pay. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Uh, so, yeah, Jax retains. Seth versus The Miz in another uh, cross-brand threatening to put both uh, both belts on SmackDown match. In a battle of John's guys. Yeah, I'm a, bit, well, a big fan of both of them, and they've put on some pretty good matches. I think, though, that... I hate that they're doing this, because there's no we know that they're not going to move the, uh, the Intercontinental Championship to SmackDown and put two titles in the mid-card on a one show and have literally no titles on Raw because Brock Lesnar's never there. Yeah, unless unless they're going to start defending the uh, Greatest Royal Rumble belt. No, that didn't even that didn't even make an appearance this week, man. That I think it's dead. The trophy was there, but there was no uh, I, I just there was no nineteen nineties Ninja Turtle style belt. I just assumed that Strowman got to keep it, like it's in like his mantle in his I don't know cave. Well, yeah, but the trophy was there. Well, yeah, you got to show that off. Probably cost a lot of money. Yeah. Anyway, we've rambled. Rollins and The Miz, they always bring their A-game to their matches, and when you bring them to a pay-per-view, they both always step up to the next level. When you throw a title on top of that, it just starts to get insane. They've both been working consistently for a while now, and really well together, so there's no way this is going to be disappointing, but there's no way we're going to get a title change. No, and that's disappointing that we, we sort of know that going in. If they did do that, it would be, be a hell of a story, though. I think it would, yeah. I mean, it would also, like, fun fact, because we were talking earlier about Charlotte and Tristratus, another Intercontinental Championship win would actually tie The Miz with Chris Jericho in terms of all-time most wins. Which could uh, make for a good Jericho-Miz feud. Oh, man, man. Like, I would pay for it. Like, I would, I would, I would sit and watch that. I would buy t-shirts. I would, my God, that would sell a pay-per-view for me, Miz versus Jericho. Imagine the promos. Imagine it. There's no, no. I don't think a lot of other people are going to agree with that, though. That's the problem. Why? Because it's the Miz, man. I mean, he's he's over with some people, but there's a lot of people that still think he's terrible. I guess so. Those people are wrong. Yes. Yeah. So we go from a match with two insanely talented guys to another match with two insanely talented guys, and a no disqualification step. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Uh, this again, this is one that has been. This is a feud that's been built really well, and the greatest Royal Rumble. They've managed to figure out a way to not let it get in the way. I just realized something. What's that? We didn't actually say who was in the match. We just started talking about the match. We're so excited about the match. AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. We were so excited about the match. We forgot to mention uh, the phenomenal one, AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. It's amazing. But it's going to be incredible. And this feud, in terms of brilliant feuds that have been leading into this backlash, it 
the AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura is up there with Nia Jax and uh, uh, Alexa Bliss for me. Yeah, it's the whole heel turn from Shinsuke has really changed my opinion of him. Yeah, I remember you saying uh, a couple weeks ago, I think, that you weren't uh, weren't as big on Shinsuke back when he was a, uh, a, a face. face and, and yeah, no, it's, and it's be- and and the reason for that is because I didn't see him anywhere else. I've never been much for going outside of WWE. That's more your territory. I haven't seen him in I hadn't seen him in much else leading up to that. So all I saw was this guy that just had a neat thing going, had a great theme song, but just never really won or did anything. Uh, I had no engagement with the character. This guy, evil bastard Shinsuke, is fantastic. He 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 is really showing a lot more of his natural charisma. I mean, when he was a, when he was a face, you would just watch him and and you know they told you that he was a charismatic rock star, so you just kind of you latched on. Like as a casual viewer, you just latched on, and uh, you know now he gets to actually show a lot more of that charisma by actively being this this uh, uh, persistent heel. Yeah, he's a larger-than-life villain now, and his facial expression, he manages to, he doesn't need words. Yeah, he tells which is good for him. his body in the ring, too. His, like, his body language and his facial expressions and things like that are really selling his character, which is really impressive. He's great. And and the battles he's had with Styles so far, I think we're destined for some, for some pretty great matches uh, in the future. And I do mean matches. I, like, I think this will continue... Like, this is uh, Shinsuke Styles 3? Yeah, if you count Greatest Royal Rumble. And regrettably, I do. But I think we'll see it a couple more times, man. And I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna stand the test of time for rivalries. These so, guys are... so let's talk about this time. Yeah. What happens? I think Shinsuke's gonna find a way to take the strap. I think Shinsuke's gonna take it off of AJ. I know, and I know we made a similar prediction about the Greatest Royal Rumble. Um... Uh, but this time around, I feel like the rivalry has has cemented itself. Uh, AJ Styles has found himself an actual like nemesis, and and we have a nice like a nice dichotomy between the two. But I think it's time for a heel champ. I, on the other hand, I'm convinced they're not ready to put the title onto Nakamura, and it's going to be an AJ Styles retention. All right. We only got one more, brother. Yes, and the the match that has one person that everybody really, really loves and one person that everyone really, really hates, unfortunately, their roles are backwards and the guy everybody likes is the heel, Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns. Yeah, mark this one on the wall, John. Drew got excited about a Roman Reigns match. That's my wall, dude. All right, so yeah, Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe. This has been building for a while. Uh, pretty much ever since Samoa Joe came back, yeah. Well, yeah, that's always been what this has been leading to. It's going to be a fight, man. Eh. That's all you got? It's all I've got. That's all I, you got? I, eh. I'm, I've got such Roman Reigns fatigue, I don't know what to do with myself. I think I'm just happy he's not fighting Lesnar. Like, I think that's all it is. I think I'm happy that he's not fighting Lesnar. I, I, I'm just, I want to see him fight someone else. And I know he's fought Joe before. We've seen it. But I think that the context of the pay per view, I think this this could like tear the house down. I think Joe yeah. needs to beat him so badly he goes away for a while. Could be a good play. That's you what I know. think they need to do. All right. So what's your prediction? Roman Reigns. That's what you think's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, my prediction is a hundred percent Roman Reigns. I, I think Joe's gonna get the choke on. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna put Roman to sleep. So that concludes our 2018 Backlash Prediction Show. I've been Drew. He's been John. Don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow us on Twitter.